On this worksheet, I'm going to be doing a few different examples where we calculate delta G, Gibbs free energy, and the equilibrium constant K for a few different redox reactions. So to calculate delta G, we are going to be using the equation delta G equals negative NFE cell. In this equation, E cell is the voltage of the cell calculated cathode minus anode. F is Faraday's constant, which is 96,500. We'll use that in the, uh, I'll write that down when we actually use it. And N is the number of moles of electrons that are exchanged in the redox reaction. As far as calculating K, there's a couple of different ways that we could do it. Um, the method that I'm going to use in this particular worksheet is E cell is equal to 0 0.0257 over n times the natural log of k. And in this equation, it uh, E cell is the same as it is for the delta G equation, and also n is the same as well. So n is representing the number of moles of electrons. And like I said, there is there are several different equations that can be used to calculate the natural or calculate the equilibrium constant k. This is just the one that I'm choosing to use. Now, one key thing that I want to point out before we get started, we're being asked to do these calculations for the equations as they are written, which means that we do need to pay attention to which half reaction is occurring at the cathode and which one is occurring at the anode. To start with our first delta G calculation, really the place that we should begin is the E cell calculation. Uh, and as you know, to calculate E cell, we are going to take the voltage at the cathode. So this is E cell is cathode minus anode. And we know red cat, which means that this we're looking for the voltage of the reduction reaction, and we're gonna subtract from that the voltage of the oxidation reaction. So we need to figure out which is which. Uh, all of the half reactions are over here in this table. This is gonna be a little bit tricky because we're gonna have to kind of dig around in this equation a little bit. So I can see the first thing that I notice is that I have Fe2+, and it is going to Fe3+. So I'm gonna begin by finding that equation in my table. I have them alphabetically here. And it looks like this, um, I'm going to scroll down a little bit, looks like this is the equation right there that we're looking for. Fe3 plus going to Fe2 plus. This is, this is not exactly what we have. It's reversed. So the equation that we have is 2 plus going to 3 plus, And this one up here is the other way around. Let's write it the way that it's written um, in this problem, in our problem. So let's write it as F4. Fe2 plus, we're reversing it, and we're also multiplying it by 4, turns into 4 Fe3 plus and 4 electrons. So again, what I did, number one, I identified the Fe2 plus 3 plus equation that's right there. I noticed that in the table of half reactions, the equation was backwards. And also I noticed that the stoichiometric coefficients were different. So I reversed the equation from the from the half reaction, I reversed it and I multiplied everything by four to give me this equation right here. Now I'm also going to grab the voltage of this and as a reminder, when we do these calculations, no matter what we might do to the balanced equation, we never do anything to the voltage of the half reaction. So we leave that voltage alone. We can see from this that electrons are being produced in this reaction. Um, this is an oxidation reaction because oxidation is the loss of electrons. So I'm just going to label that as our oxidation. Now this means that everything that we have left, this must be our reduction reaction. And let's go find that. It might be under the N's. It might be under the O's. Uh, looks like I have found... N2 plus 4H2O makes 4OH minus, looks like this is the equation right here. And it doesn't look like we need to make any changes to it. Everything looks the same. So we have N2 plus 4H2O plus 4 electrons. So we have electrons being gained in this reaction. This is definitely a reduction. 4OH minus plus N2H4. Let's copy that voltage, negative 1.16, and then we'll label this as, a, as our reduction. 
now that we have our those half reactions identified and really the, the main purpose of identifying the half reactions is to identify which is the oxidation, which one is the reduction, we can take these numbers and plug them up here into E cell. Our reduction is negative 1.16 and we're going to subtract our oxidation 0.771 and this is going to end up being a negative number but don't be alarmed by that. The problem does say to do these calculations as the equation is written, which is a kind of a hint of saying, hey, maybe you're going to get a negative number. Don't panic if you do. Negative 1.931 volts. That's our E cell. Now we are able to calculate delta G. The value of N in delta G is the number of moles of electrons that are being exchanged in the reaction. And to get that number, we're just going to be looking at the half reactions, how many moles of electrons we have in those half reactions. And that's a four. So we have four moles of electrons right there. I'm putting my parentheses on the outside of the negative sign. That's kind of a thing I do to help minimize the chance that I lose it. Faraday's, Faraday's constant is 96,500 joules per mole of electron time times volts. And then the last thing we want to put in here is our E cell value that we just calculated, negative 1.931 volts. The volt units cancel, the moles of electrons units cancel, and we're left with units of delta uh, of, of joules for delta G. Uh, so let's multiply this out, 96,500 times 4, and I'm getting a positive 7,4,5,3,6,6 joules. Delta G values are typically given in kilojoules, so we can divide that by 1,000 and we get 745 kilojoules. Does this number make sense? A positive delta G is corresponding to a non-spontaneous reaction, and a negative value of E cell is also not spontaneous. A spontaneous E cell is a positive number, so these two numbers are consistent with each other. Let's do the last step here and calculate the value of the equilibrium constant K. And to do that, I'm actually going to need to uh, make myself some room, so I'm going to erase this stuff right here. To um, calculate K, we're going to use E cell, which is negative 1.931, uh, and then that is going to be equal to 0 0.0257 over the number of moles of electrons, which we said is 4, and we'll multiply that by the natural log of K. So I'm going to begin by just isolating the natural log of K. I'm going to take 1.931, I'm going to multiply it by 4, and then I'm going to divide by 0 0.0257, and I get a negative 300.5. To get the value of K, I'm going to go E to the negative 300.5, the anti-natural log, and I get 3 times 10 to the negative 131. That's also consistent with a non-spontaneous reaction. An equilibrium constant with 10 to the negative 131 means the reaction essentially does not move at all. Let's continue practicing this with our second example. So again, the very first thing that we're going to do is calculate E cell. And that is going to be our cathode minus anode or our reduction minus our oxidation. And I am going to take a look at the different reactants that we have and look for something that I can kind of identify quickly. Uh, I can see that we have an NH, N2H2, and it looks like it's turning into an N2. So let's go to our table of half reactions and see if we can find that. N2. It looks like I have found it right here but it looks like it's written in reverse. So I have my N2 and H2, 4 H2O. This equation actually is not exactly the same. It looks like there must just be a typo in this equation right here. It must need to be a four for this to work. So we have N2 and then 
4 H2O, and that is turning into 4 OH minus and N2H4. So the reaction that we see in the table has the correct stoichiometric coefficients, but it is just turned around. So I'm going to um, I'm going to copy the reaction from the table, but I'm going to turn it around so that it's lined up the same as the reaction that we have in the problem. 4OH minus plus N2H4 makes N2 plus 4H2O plus 4 electrons. And then let's copy that voltage down. Remember, doesn't matter what we do to the equations, we never make a change to the voltage. So um, that included our OH minus and our H2O, and that means that the other half reaction that we're looking for is just with bromine. And so let's find that reaction. The bromine reaction is right here, and it is in the same order as what we have in the problem. We have bromine on the left-hand side and two Br minuses on the right-hand side. This one, though, the stoichiometric coefficient is wrong. We need to take this equation from the table and multiply it by two. So we have two Br2 plus four electrons makes four Br minus. And let's get our voltage value for that. 1.066. Looking at these two reactions, we can see that the bromine reaction uh, reductions are being, or electrons are being gained or added. So this is our reduction. Oxidation is lost, reduction is gained. Down here, we're losing electrons. So this is our oxidation. Oxidation is lost. Let's plug these values into our E cell equation. Reduction value is 1.066 minus the oxidation value, negative 1.16. And let's calculate E cell. 1.066 plus 1.16 is 2.226 volts. So this is a spontaneous reaction. Next, let's calculate delta G. Delta G is going to be the number of moles of electrons. This is going to be a four. I'm gonna leave the units off just to save space. Multiply by Faraday's constant, 96,500, and then multiply the value of E cell, 2.226, to give us our delta G, negative four times 96,500 times 2.226 is negative 859.236, and that is joules, divide by 1,800, negative 859 kilojoules. Negative number means that it's a spontaneous reaction. For the last part, calculating the value of K, we will take, again, we will take our E cell, we, uh, which is 2.226 volts, we will set that equal to 0 0.0257 divided by the number of electrons, which is 4, and that is equal to the natural log of K. The natural log of K is 2.226 times 4 divided by 0 0.0257, and then take the anti-natural log of that, we get 2.9 times 10 to the 150 very spontaneous. We have one more of these reactions to do. We'll see if we can take a couple shortcuts on this one. Um, so I'm going to begin by looking for my half reactions. I have chlorine going to Cl2. Actually, I'm going to write out my E cell. E cell equals the reduction minus the oxidation. So I have chlorine going to Cl2. Let's go find that reaction. Um, it looks like it is right here. Cl2 on the left-hand side. So it's reverse of what we have in this equation, but the stoichiometric coefficient is correct. Um, so in this in this table right here, it's being written as an oxid or as a reduction. This is a table of reduction half potentials. All of them are plus two electrons on the left hand side. For us, because this is the other way around, that means that this is an oxidation, not an oxidation. 
So this number that we get from this particular half reaction, that's going to be our oxidation. I'm gonna write that down, 1.35827. And our other one is going to be the reduction. The other, the other thing we wanna make a note of is that we have two electrons in this half reaction. We're just gonna, I'm just gonna kinda of make a note of that, that we have two moles of electrons. Now let's go find our other half reaction. This one is probably gonna be under the nitrogens. We are looking for HNO2. Looks like I found it right there. HNO2, H plus going to NO and H2O. This in the table is in the same order as we have it in this reaction. So that means that this is our reduction. This is the number that we wanna plug into the E cell equation as our reduction, 0.9. Eight, three. And let's work that out. 0.983 minus 1.35827 is negative 0.37527 volts. Let's calculate our delta G, the number of moles of electrons. Remember, we made a note of that from the first reaction that we looked at. So that's a two, negative two, Faraday's constant, 96,500 and our voltage negative 0.37527. This is gonna give us a negative number, uh, or excuse me, it's gonna give us a positive number. It's gonna be a non-spontaneous reaction. And I'm also gonna divide by a thousand to get it right straight into kilojoules, negative 72.4 kilojoules. We're also gonna do our natural log of K calculation. We have for our voltage negative 0.37527. That is equal to 0 0.0257 divided by the moles of electrons, which is two times the natural log of K. Negative 0.3527527 times two divided by 0 0.0257 inverse natural log K is 2.07 times 10 to the negative 13.